So I'm going to go through the first part of the Tropical Storms course, looking at the formation of tropical storms and then a little bit about how they are tracked and monitored. So first of all here we need to think about the conditions necessary for tropical storm formation. Um, essentially a tropical storm won't form unless the SST, the sea surface temperature, is greater than 27 degrees centigrade and that there is considerable warmth to a depth of about 50 metres. That's so that the colder water at depth doesn't come up and interfere with the warmer water uh, at the surface and, and prevent the storm developing. You won't find tropical storms forming outside the latitudes uh, shown on uh, this little text here, so no more than 20 degrees north or south but not within 5 degrees of the equator. More than 20 degrees north or south, the water's too cold. Closer to the equator than 5 degrees, there's not enough Coriolis force to allow the storm to develop. Talking of which, the Coriolis force is important because it generates the rotational movement that we find in all weather systems, uh, so that's an important factor. Low wind shear is another important condition necessary for the formation of a tropical storm. Wind shear is the extent to which there is lateral variation in the atmosphere as you go up through it. So uh, for a hurricane to form, you need to have a pretty consistent uh, situation going all the way up so that the storm can develop a substantial vertical extent. And at that high altitude, we really do need to have cooler air. Uh, and if there is cooler air at high altitude, that will prompt the rapid cooling which needs to happen to allow the storm to develop fully, to allow lots of condensation to occur, of which more in a moment. In your notes you've got somewhere, I hope, an annotated base map showing where tropical storms form uh, and locating these reasons onto that base map. So dig that out and have a look as part of your revision. Now this goes through the process of cooling and condensation which occurs in all weather systems but particularly importantly in a hurricane. First is that we have warm moist air over the ocean. This rises, okay, the warm moist air and the water vapour rises up through the atmosphere and as it rises it's going to cool down and the impact of that cooling on the water vapour in the atmosphere is that it will condense. So we then have lots of liquid droplets in the atmosphere those go to make up clouds. Now that process of condensation does something really important. There's something called latent heat which is the heat which effectively keeps the water vapour as a gas until it cools down enough to form a liquid. And once it's formed liquid that heat is released and the heat is released into the atmosphere allowing the air to continue rising. And this is really important because it creates what's called unstable air. Uh, this release of latent heat is connected to the creation of unstable air. And unstable air will continue rising um, up into the atmosphere. And that's important in a tropical storm because that's what creates the very high vertical extent. So the warm air carries on rising uh, and that sucks up more warm, moist air from the ocean. So as the air rises up in this direction, it creates a partial vacuum down here, which is filled by more warm, moist air being drawn in from the sides, and that then starts to rise as well. So this process as a whole causes uh, uh, tropical storms to begin to form. Now the uplift mechanism is important here. Um, this process happens whenever you have a weather system, whenever you have rising air, but how it gets going differs from place to place. In the case of tropical storms, it's convectional uplift. It's uplift of hot air, warm air. But you can also have uplift caused by uh, what's called the orographic uplift mechanism. That's where air is forced to rise over mountains. It has exactly the same effect. It cools the air down, but a different uplift mechanism. And frontal uplift, which occurs when warm air rises over cooler air, um, as in a mi mid-latitude depression. So those three uplift mechanisms are very important as well. Here's three diagrams of a hurricane. Very, very quickly, the classic uh, satellite image or air photo aerial photograph showing the eye and the eye wall. This one here, you should connect to the previous diagram. Here's our rising air 
coming up here and here. And as it reaches great altitude, it will cool and spread out. And it spreads out later laterally away from the centre of the storm, but also, as shown here, will descend down in the middle of the storm. So it'll have rising air that comes up and goes back down in the middle. And that forms the eye of the hurricane. The eye of the hurricane is a small area of greater high pressure, sorry, of greater pressure, not high pressure, uh, right in the middle of the storm around the eye. The corkscrewing effect shown by this arrow is the rotation of the storm, and that's caused by the Coriolis force acting on this rising tube of air. Um, very quickly, this YouTube link is a link to a film we watched in class about how hurricanes are born from the BBC. Um, I've no idea if it'll work in this film or not. I suspect not, so the hyperlink is at the top there, and it's also on the DCGS Geography YouTube channel in the A2 Climatic Hazards playlist. In that film are two terms that you need to understand. The first is jet stream. The jet stream determines the direction of movement and pace of movement of the whole weather system. So if a hurricane gets sort of caught by the jet stream, it will travel briskly, and if it doesn't, it'll travel more slowly. The tropical wave is also mentioned in that film in the context of the creation of, thunder, of um, tropical storms. Uh, the tropical wave will emerge out of Central Africa and then move westwards over the Atlantic. Uh, this is uh, the product of convectional activity over the land of Central Africa, the, the hot land of Central Africa, uh, which then heads out over the sea and starts that process of sucking up more and more warm, moist air. And finally, uh, to touch on monitoring and tracking of hurricanes, uh, this picture here is a picture of um, the uh, one of the geostationary satellites which uh, will image our, the world's weather systems. It has a number of different sensors that will uh, record visible light images and infrared images of the uh, weather system that it observes. Um, the visible light weather system uh, with the visible light images you'll be familiar with. This is an example of an infrared image. shows the variations in temperature of a storm. This is actually Hurricane Katrina uh, in 2005. Um, one big advantage of infrared images that you can see here, notice the time quarter to one in the morning it works uh, infrared imagery will work at night as well as during the day um, and what you can see here is temperature where white is cold and blue is warmer so this here is showing us the uh, intense center of Katrina the, the cloud tops the very high altitude cloud tops uh, and this would enable the the forecasters to, to understand a lot about the storm so there you are quick run through the uh, formation and monitoring of hurricanes uh, hopefully that'll be useful for you as a recap for your revision.